Okay, good morning and uh, welcome everyone to our presentation. Uh, my name is Sean Allen. I'm a vice president of Lithos America in Albany, New York. And we are the, uh, the US branch of the company Lithos GmbH uh, based in Vienna, Austria, uh, which focuses on 3D printers and developing advanced ceramic materials for printing. Um, today, my colleague Daniel Bonza from Lithos in Austria will be pre presenting a um, presentation on using our technology, the lithography based ceramic manufacturing, um, as a tool for producing ceramics for set applications, including crowns, potentially implants, and other applications. Um, we'll be taking questions and answers. Um, through the Q&A tool in Zoom. So please put questions there. And at the end of the talk, we will uh, go through and answer as many questions as we can. Um, apart from that, we'll try to answer folks' questions uh, offline after, after the presentation, if we're not able to get to them today. Um, so now I'd, I'd like to turn the talk over to my colleague, uh, Daniel, and I'll let him tell you more about what it is that, that we're offering here. Thanks a lot, Sean, and uh, also welcome from my side and good morning here from Vienna. Um, as Sean already introduced me, my name is Daniel, and uh, I, will, I will now give you a short uh, overview about what Litus is doing. So we see ourselves uh, as your partner for ceramic 3D printing. We are offering uh, full solutions of all kinds of 3D printers, materials, software, and all kinds of customized solutions. Uh, with that uh, product portfolio, we have developed in the last years to the world's market an innovation leader for ceramic 3D printing. So far, we uh, have two locations, one in Vienna in Austria, and as Sean already said, in, in Troy in New York. Uh, we are now more than 70 employees, and so far we have installed worldwide more than 70 printers uh, at all our customers and more than 25% of our customers have already two or more machines. So uh, who are those customers? For example, you might know some of them. Uh, for example, KLS Martin Group, a uh, big player in uh, patient-specific implants. Cerex, uh, that is a, 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 a subsidiary of the tool producer Bosch. Uh, but also orthopedic implant manufacturers or CMF implant manufacturers. Third axis is more in, in, in real pure dental applications. Uh, also some research organizations like University of Zurich, Fraunhofer, AKTS, but also, for example, Colorado School of Mines uh, and many more, Alfred University. So what is it? about today, it's about LCM technology. LCM stands for lithography-based ceramic manufacturing, and it's a name for a 3D printing technology, which I want to present you now in more detail. So the overall per process chain here is, uh, you start with any kind of CAT uh, file, uh, STL file, which you send to the printer, where uh, it gets connected with the parameters for the material. And of course, then you do the actual print, I will come on the next slide too. What you get out of it is then a so-called composite consisting of a three-dimensional network of a polymer, so plastics, which gives it the shape and the ceramic particles mixed between. You now do a so-called thermal post-processing, which means debinding and sintering. Debinding is a thermal removal of the polymeric binder. So after that, this is just pure ceramic. And then you sinter together, like you probably know from standard ceramic manufacturing. And then you end up with your final ceramic uh, part. So how did, does the print itself work? It's a principle of that photopolymerization. So that means we have a three-dimensional model of the part we want to print. Let's uh, have this little bunny here. This little bunny gets now sliced virtually into two-dimensional images. And each of those images is now projected towards a photosensitive formulation. We call it slurry or suspension. And where the light hits this formulation, which is depicted here in white, the material will solidify by means of photopolymerization. Where there is no light, which is depicted here in gray, the formulation will stay liquid. This is now done over and over again until all of those images have been projected on the material. And then uh, we end up with the actual uh, printed part. What you see here is a scheme of 
the uh, of the printer of the inside of the printer you have one the building platform and uh, there the parts that started to print with uh, already hang that two is the vat with a with a glass bottom and we, we just project the image from below with the led as light source a digital micro mirror device and some optical system like lenses uh, through the bottom of this vat through the material so that it will create the new layer, which then attaches to the already built part on the building platform. And so we're gradually pulling out the part from the vat. So in the end, all the parts will hang on the building platform. The, the big advantage of this compared to, the, to, to other methods is that you only need this amount of material that is really necessary for actual building the part and not for the whole building volume. So if you, for example, have only one crown on the building platform, you will only need the material for this single crown, not for like the whole volume. So I already mentioned that after the actual printing process, you will have to go for thermal post-processing. You can imagine that as uh, here in depicted in gray, you have the photopolymer, which is a, a network and they're within dispersed ceramic particles. These ceramic particles uh, are now held together by the photopolymer in shape, as you can see here in the background of our CEO printed from alumina. And now we're burning out the polymer. So our CEO is shrinking a bit and we end up with a so-called white body. This white body has now just a, small, a few center bridges between the ceramic particles. And uh, if we now heat it up further, the part, or in this case, our CEO, then uh, we end up with a completely densified ceramic part. Uh, we have a further shrinkage to the final dimension. That of course means that we have to print the part a bit larger than it will be uh, in the end after the sintering. And this uh, compensation factor is of course, uh, calculated or developed within our material and application development and it's just a parameter in the software of our machine. So regarding machines, what do we have here? What can you see here? You have here the 7500, which is um, actually not really existing anymore, which was so far the, the standard for industry and the dental version of it. The dental version of it uh, has some extra modules, which makes it especially interesting for printing dental and medical applications. Um, and last year we launched the Seraphab system series uh, which, uh, as you can see here, is available in three different configurations, uh, all with the same housing, but the inner stuff will di will differ. So you can you can make your choice between 25 up to 75 microns lateral resolution, and the layer thickness is between 10 and 150 microns. It can be adjusted according to your needs. Um, depending on your lateral resolution, the building volume or the building platform size will be different. So starting from 64 times 40 millimeters, approximately a pack of cigarettes, uh, up to 192 millimeters times 120 millimeters. And the, length, the maximum length you can print with is half a meter. Regarding speed, it's important to understand it will not matter if you have one part on your building platform or several parts. The only thing that will change the speed that you can print with is the height of the part. The, the higher the part is, um, the longer it will take. And then again, you can print, um, it will depend on the layer thickness. If you have a higher layer thickness, the print will be much faster compared with a lower layer thickness. What kind of ceramics do we now have in our portfolio? So of course, we're coming from industry there. Uh, aluminum oxide, alumina is definitely the, the working horse there. But of course, in dental application, zirconia is something very, very important. But for surgical applications, for example, tricalcium phosphate hydroxyapatite, bioactive glasses, all for bone replacement, also for implants, for example, silicon nitride, which is in a non-oxide ceramics, and all kinds of, of technical ceramics, uh, up to porcelain, toughened, uh, zirconia toughened alumina, aluminum toughened zirconia, and many more. So what kind of uh, properties can you expect when we talk about these materials. Here it's important that we always aim for the same properties that you can also achieve in classical uh, methods like in milling, like in, uh, in 
in casting, in injection molding, and so on. So for example, you get a full point bending strength of 430 megapascal for alumina, of 930 megapascals for zirconia, 760 megapascals for silicon nitride, and a density well above 99% of the theoretical density. If you have a look at their surface roughness, you can see the material, uh, the surface roughness is very good, the surface quality is very good. Uh, so you end up typically in the range of one micron surface roughness. Something completely new and I think uh, firstly presented here is about lithium disilicate. Uh, you will probably notice glass ceramics as for example, um, uh, from the company Ivoclar, who uses this for years now for dental restorations in milling and hot pressing. Uh, now it's the first time that you can really print it actually and create uh, also dental restorations from it. As you can see, it, it gives a much better translucency compared to zirconia, while at the same time giving still a good mechanical strength, good biocompatibility, and of course there is a lot of established ways to colorize it. I already mentioned bone replacement materials, so it means that it can be resorbed by the by the by the, bo uh, by the body and be um, converted into actual native bone. It can be tricalcium phosphate or hydroxyapatite, which is actually the inorganic fraction of the bone anyway. Blends of those materials, as well as bioactive glasses. If we now talk about dental applications, so what can you do about it? Of course, the primary application for any 3D printing is all kinds of lattices. Um, what you can see here is in the lattices that you can print very, very delicate features going down to uh, sizes of below 100 microns and still giving a very good reproducibility and very homogeneous lattice, for example. If we combine the best of two worlds, as I like to say here, is combination of the zirconia shell and the outside, which gives the durability of this bone defect. So this is a bone defect in a jaw after a, after a tumor removal. And the aim was here to bridge it during the healing phase, giving a proper stabilization with the zirconia on the outside, while at the same time allowing the bone to grow through to the two ends together. Uh, and here we have the bioresorbable hydrox hydroxyapatite, which will allow gradually the bone um, growing through. What you can see here additionally, at the top you have some holes where after the healing phase, you will then be able also to implant some, uh, some dental implants to restore the chewing ability. If we're coming to dental restorations, what can you do here with it? Of course, you can create all kinds of crowns, bridges, veneers. What I think is really mentionable here uh, is that uh, you can really get very fine edges uh, really sharp fissures here, really natural looking fissures because you're not limited with the um, diameter of the rotating tool. You don't need any polishing and you can just use standard staining and cementing uh, or gluing uh, strategies that you already know. Talk, talking about delicate parts, we have here a cross section of a, of a veneer where you can see here we have a thickness of 700 microns here going down to in sintered state only 70 micron, which is actually thinner than a human hair at the very bond, uh, at the very edge of these veneer. So I think what can be achieved here is really something that is outstanding. Um, but also if we talk about dental implants, and I think this is also important, you can use various kinds of materials, for example, zirconia, for example, alumina, ATZ, ZTA, non-oxide ceramics like the silicon nitride, which has a very interesting rough surface, surface and the material is already known from spine surgery, uh, where they use it as spacers between the um, between the, the parts of the spine with very good uh, bone ingrowth. The surface can be tailored, as you can see here, by adjusting, for example, the layer height. You can get here a micro roughness and a nano roughness at the same time, which it, again uh, can facilitate the bone on growth. And for example, you can print directly ISO inner threads without having to, to post machine them. Somehow you can directly print them within the dental implants. 
And at the same time, it's highly productive. And what that means, I want to show you a few, few slides afterwards. Now, I hope I can show you uh, what is the full digital workflow. So you have to get your data somehow. And the data uh, are usually generated, for example, by all kinds of scanners, for example, intraoral scanners. And then I hope I can show you the video. Of course not. Um, I have to shortly stop here my presentation so that I can show you the video uh, on the directly. So not too much of an issue here. Give me a second. So I hope now you can you can see the the video. What you can see here now is the scan, the scan teeth situation of a patient, and then how the dentist uh, or the dental technician is creating the models of the future uh, crowns uh, of the patient. So completely digital. And what comes out of it is then the STL file that can go directly in our system for printing. So here now they can check of the occlusion and the complete fit, see what it will look like, and then can export it as a STL file. So this is there is solutions for that on the market. This is not something new. It's then about what we can do directly with those files, not about the um, the scanning process itself. So I will switch back here to my presentation. So if you now have a look at the whole uh, process chain. You have you need to design something which you can do, pr for example, by uh, by scanning and then with the software I just shown, I just showed. <coughs> then you do the actual three D printing. You see here the one single crown, the virtual building platform. You end up with the green part. Here you still have the support structures on. You can remove it then. You will clean it, you will uh, debind it, then you can do all kinds of finishing steps like colorization, like glazing, like uh, if you like some polishing, and then you end up with the final actual product or the actual crown in this case. So documentation is always an important topic. Of course, uh, we, we're producing here a medical device. So we also offer documentation for traceability of the whole uh, device production process, which will automatically document all the run parameters. It will document all the operator interactions during the print line, run, like opening door, like adding material, like changing cartridges and so on. It will also document uh, what kind of material you use, of course, what lot, what shelf life, you have the single, a simple barcode system, and so therefore you also prevent material mix-ups. So you can prevent dangerous and expensive mistakes. So I think this is really helpful for uh, for our customers here. I always get the, 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 the question or the claim that 3D printing is not productive. And so today I want to show you some examples about productivity. So with a single Seraphab S65, if we put, you can, as you can see here, we can put at one print job, 48 molar crowns on the world to building platform. With that, uh, we need about five minutes to print for a unit, which takes about 2.8 grams of material. So if we really uh, print 24 seven with, with that machine, you can print with a single machine, hundred thousands of crowns per year. If we now go, uh, for example, for canine crowns, uh, then for example, it's it's the same. It will it will take the same amount of time. It's then here in this case, it's ninety five thousand crowns because they are positioned a bit different. It's then about the actual size of the part, of course. Um, with veneers, we can go up to one hundred veneers at the same time. It is, it's two point five minutes printing time for a single veneer, only taking less than a gram of material. So you can produce a, more than two hundred thousand veneers per year with a single machine, and it gets even nicer if you switch to implants, where you can get up to two hundred, almost two hundred sixty thousand implants a year. I think this is something where you could definitely can speak about 
productivity. And this is not only prototyping or small scale production. So if we now compare CAD CAM with uh, 3D printing with the LSM process, of course, CAD CAM is the conventional method. It's well known and used for several decades. It's everybody knows it, how it works. Uh, so here definitely LSM is something new. Most people do not know about how it exactly works, uh, but it's a very innovative method. Um, a di big difference is mat mat material utilization. Usually lose um, more uh, around 80% of the blank and only 20% you can actually use for your part. Whereas here for printing, you can use more than 80% of the, of the material that you use for. Um, a big advantage of CAD CAM milling is that you can use speed sintering, which is very fast, uh, very well uh, developed. In LCM, we are a bit behind that because we need a debinding and a sintering step, which takes a bit more time. So therefore, uh, we are basically in a production step uh, where usually the blank producer is, so they also have to debind their blanks, uh, but you get already the blank in for CAD CAM in a white state. So here you will print a part coming to the green state and have to transfer it yourself to white state. On the other side, CAD CAM has a severe dust generation, is very loud and noisy, and machine cleaning is a really cumbersome job. Whereas the LCM is a dust free process, it's very quiet, so it does not really produce any kind of sound. Uh, it's intuitive and it's a fast and easy material change as well as cleaning. So I'm Almost at the end, what I want to show you here is currently there are Serifab medical systems. So systems used for dev medical device manufacturing set up in the US, in Europe, in Brazil, and in Australia. Uh, we have customers who have um, undergone the certification process for medical devices of the class three in Europe, as well as uh, medical class two devices in the US with 510K application. So they are already in the market. But I have to mention here that the regulatory work was here mainly done by our customers, of course, with guidance and help from us. But in the end, they are the people who are uh, in charge of getting the material devices here to the market. Uh, in the very soon future, our material production will also be under the ISO 13485 uh, quality management system and will also offer uh, in future more uh, guidance and consulting regarding uh, validation and qualification of the whole processes. And so we are really committed to your vision of innovation for the dental industry. And uh, I would be very happy if you would uh, visit our virtual booth. Uh, you can see here the, the link as well as the QR code. And yeah, with that, I want to thank you for your kind uh, attention. And I think uh, the floor is now open for questions and discussions. All right, well, Daniel, we have a, a first question um, from uh, Wes Royston asking, how long does the 3D printing step take as well as sintering? Um, so the, as, as, as I showed um, quite some slides ago, um, I will just go back a bit. As you can see here, it's two minutes per implant. It's uh, 198 implants, let's say 200 implants per run times two minutes per implant. So it's it's 400 minutes for a run in this case. And then it depends quite a lot on what material you use uh, for um, and how the, how, the material, how the part actually looks like. It's very much wall dependent, but you can say usually as um, printing is something in the, uh, in the dimension of hours. Um, and the binding and sintering is then something around in, in days. So definitely not speed sintering because we have this divine process. But you can uh, use here classical ceramic furnaces with where, really, uh, with where you can get a high number of parts inside. So you can easily uh, sinter together at several, several hundred of crowns. But what it's definitely not, it's not a chair side manufacturing method. That is something that I don't see in the near future. Okay, um, and we have a, a few questions are asking about um, um, cost and ROI. Um, is that something that, that you could uh, speak to? Uh, the the ROI is something that it's very uh, it's very hard to tell because we we don't know about the, the what the, the whole 
the whole work around this and, and all the, the things. What the, the cost of acqui acquisition is the machines. Uh, is around uh, 300,000 euros, uh, 330,000 euros. So I, I guess it's about 400,000 uh, US dollars, and a, a bit of side, uh, a bit of side equipment. But that's like a good estimation. So uh, the ROI is something I cannot really answer here. But uh, if you say, if you see that the numbers that you can generate here, and you know how many, uh, how much you will sell the parts for, then you can do this calculation, I think, pretty much or pretty easily yourself. OK. Um, another question was um, asking again about the size of the build area. Yes, the size of the build area is, in one case, it's uh, 60. So for the lowest one is 60 times 40. And the largest one is 192 times 120 millimeters. And in theory, you can even stack up uh, to up to 500 millimeters in sets direction, um, several parts. Oh, and we had another question. If if you could um, uh, just explain what what is the, what do you meant by debinding? Uh, debinding is a is a process where you get rid of the of the organic binder. So that means uh, that you have this polymeric binder inside, and you will just burn it out, like you open your a furnace and you put a plastic part inside and you you're just burning it and if there is ceramics inside the ceramic will then stay if you have only a plastic part nothing will stay you will just burn it so we also had uh, another part of uh, one question was asking about availability in canada and um um generally systems are available around the world. Uh, Litho is America based in New York, um, works with uh, our customers in the US and in Canada. So we'd be able to, to help with that. Um, I know there's some additional uh, CSA and other um, guidelines for equipment going into Canada, but we can we could talk about that. Absolutely. So we, we are delivering almost to any country in the world if it's not a war zone. Oh, and I think we have just a minute left and there's one last question I think we can ask about difference in translucencies available to print um, in sizal edge. Uh, yes, um, in this, so we have, we have already materials uh, in development with different uh, concentrations of yttria. So you get, you will end up with different uh, translucencies of course, and in the, it's also uh, possible to combine different materials here, um, but this is something I would see more. The combination uh, is something as uh, I would see more for the near future, not available here to the broad public at the moment. I think there's one one last question. I think we have just a minute. We can ask. Um, does, you may have mentioned it, but how many materials can be printed on this particular printer? So we have currently about uh, eight different standard materials and I would say around 20 uh, research and development materials available. And you can print all of those materials on the, on the same printer. You just have to change after the different materials. This change usually takes about uh, three to five minutes. And uh, there is usually, if it's a ceramic that can be sintered and if it's not as a rule of thumb, it's not extremely dark then uh, it's quite likely that we can also use it on the machine. We also do here custom uh, developments. So if you are interested, please contact Sean or me, then definitely uh, we will be happy to, to answer here further questions. Uh, I think here the most important materials again that we can print is zirconia, is lithium disilicate, is alumina, and uh, tricalcium phosphate hydroxy All right, great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for um, your attention and all the great questions. I know we have to uh, wrap up at this time. Um, but please visit us at our booth. Feel free to reach out to us, and we'll be happy to talk to everyone um, offline here. Thanks a lot from my side, and hope to see you soon.